Richmond and Rosenberg have always been called the Twin Cities, even though Richmond has its pride and Rosenberg had its pride. It was like one big city. This is the, the thing about Texas is barbecue, you know? Really nice and juicy, tender. The smoke, the spices, it just tickles the senses. Okay, can I help you? We're inside of Schultz's Barbecue in Rosenberg. We're sitting in a wonderful swinging door barbecue in Richmond, Texas. My dad was a black cowboy, and my uncles and my cousins, and nobody ever heard of him because they tried to just say there wasn't any black cowboys. But I knew there were black cowboys. I didn't want what they did to go in there. Three years just ago, searching for some guy asked me to open up this black cowboy museum. I've always loved cars. I love new cars, old cars. So behind us is a 1957 Ford B500 short bus. We've been working on it for about two and a half years. So in 2017, I, I started the nonprofit Beyond the Bus, and I want to make it into kind of a movement. And it really is about looking past the bus. It's really about getting people with disabilities out doing activities they didn't think they could do. What it's going to do is it's going to change people's lives. I guarantee you, we've seen it already. Oh, aisle number two. David okay. Patton has found himself walking HEB aisles more than ever. How you doing? The Richmond man is on a mission to get goods for breakfast. Captain Crunch. Lunch. Peanut butter and grape jelly. And dinner. Chicken legs, wings, and breasts. 99 cent a pound. That's a great deal. But the State Farm agent isn't shopping for himself. In addition to looking at policies, Patton has spent the past few months reviewing shopping lists. 20 Kool-Aid individual packets, grape and punch flavored. <laughs> it might give Patton a chuckle, but he knows it could be life-saving. During the coronavirus pandemic, Patton shopped for his elderly Richmond and Rosenberg customers. We came up with the idea of, let's do it for them. The community help goes beyond store shelves. My parents weren't going to buy uh, 17 magazine clothes, so I figured, you know what, I'll make my own clothes. Cynthia Rodriguez is putting her sewing passion to work after her son asked for a mask and she saw a need. I literally spent a month and a half sewing 16 hours a day. In all, Rodriguez says she's made 400 masks and more are on the way. Next week, she's holding a free mask making class at 310 Gallery in Richmond. You have to spread love and positivity and show people that things are good. A similar reason why Patton wanders HEB aisles. Vegetable oil. Looking for goods so his most vulnerable customers can stay safe. We were called to serve. We got to take care of our community. For 70 years, Oak Bend Medical Center has been a part of the Richmond community. You can't walk through the hallways here without somebody saying hi to you and uh, making you feel like your family. The facility is looking to add new members of the family. Right now, there are a number of jobs available. As you can imagine, we have lots of clinical jobs, nursing, um, all levels of nursing. While those require medical training, it doesn't mean you need it to get a job. We have housekeepers, we have food services, we have patient registration. All of those are things that you don't have to have a medical background for. In Rosenberg, the area's largest new facility is looking for help too. More than a year ago, Dollar Tree announced it was coming to this spot off the Southwest Freeway. It's not a massive store, but a distribution center to get product into its stores in the region. The company picked Rosenberg for its proximity to Houston and available workforce. If you're looking for a job, the company has a number of positions starting at 15 15 an hour. The facility isn't complete, but Dollar Tree is already hiring 300 employees. With the unemployment rate around 14% due to the pandemic, now could be the perfect time to land a job. We hope that people who have um, had tough times because of this will go on and look at the jobs that are offered here because if you think that maybe you wouldn't qualify to work at a hospital, think again. Your wife works in Richmond. Correct. You work in Rosenberg. Yep. Tell me the difference between Richmond and Rosenberg. They're pretty similar. Both um, old towns are right on a railroad. Uh, they both have similar stores, antique shops. You guys both own small businesses in Rosenberg. Why is Rosenberg a good place to do that? So, honestly, when, when we first opened uh, the cafe, the Overlord Cafe in Rosenberg, I think one of the reasons 
that we've been so successful is because of the community here in downtown Rosenberg. Um, you, you can't build a business by yourself and it was unbelievable what the support was from historic Rosenberg when we opened. That was an advantage during COVID that you had a lot of these different businesses and customers really rally together to take care of each other. We need to be unified as one. We need to be here together as a team. And that's what Old Downtown does. We work together in Rosenberg as a team to support each other. And if I can't, I'm not open the day, I'll send you to over here to get shirts, or I'll send you over to the antique shops, or I'll send you over to another time soda fountain and get a milkshake. That's what we do as a team. You don't live in Rosenberg, you live in Sugarland, but you say you come here almost every day. Almost, because they have so many shops, so many uh, thing entertainment. So Joe, what's your favorite place in Rosenberg and why? I suppose here, uh, because of the variety of foods. And Daisy? Oh, they have so many shops there. My my specialty here. It's cool, like this Morton Street. Yes. You step outside, it doesn't feel like 2020 out there. You no. go back in time. Yeah. And I think that's cool. I just love the feel when you come down here. I come down here all the time to go to the little boutiques. There's two of them down here that are really, or a couple of them that are down here that are really neat. I mean, everything's just right here in this, this area. And it's local. It's local. Fanny McGee's Restaurant. It's hard enough to own a restaurant in normal times. What's it been like owning a restaurant during the COVID-19 times? Well, you know, I've been through hard times in the past 35 years, but this was definitely unique. You guys have been in Richmond for a long time, so tell me how the community of Richmond rallied together to make sure you guys had something you could come back to. People know me and they know, they've seen me grow from a little restaurant in Rosenberg, Texas, where I could barely see 16 people to opening this. Uh, how have they helped? Oh my goodness. Helped us with social media, posting just to get our name out there. Hey, they're still doing takeout, carry out. So it's just, it was, it's a community that cares about small business. That's the one word that keeps coming up to us, community. Yes. yes. Keeping it local is important. Mm -hmm. Having a lot of, um, again, that community building everybody up and holding each other accountable and keeping each other afloat, that's, that's the, the mainstay of America. My name is Larry Countless. I used to be a country medicine singer. I lost my voice 30 years ago. And I have a museum. I turned my eyes toward cloudless skies so often, Lord, three years Just ago. Searching for some God God him rain. asked me to open up this black cowboy museum. My dad was a black cowboy, and my uncles and my cousins. And nobody's ever heard of me because they tried to just say there wasn't any black cowboy. But I knew there were black cowboys. I didn't want what they did to go in there. Most of the people don't even know where the word cowboy came from. The word cowboy came from slaves. There were uh, house boys, yard boys. When somebody worked cows, he was calling a cow. Their name won't ring like Roy Rogers or John Wayne. You know, they, they won't ring, but there was some famous black cowboys. There was Nat Love, uh, Bill Pickett. Bill Pickett invented Bulldog. Nat Love, he was a famous fighter, an uh, Indian fighter, and cowboy. Uh, um, back in the 1800s, Nat Love was one of the best cowboys that ever lived. Big Preacher William, that was my uncle, and Tex Williams was his son. He was the first black to make the state finals in the state of Texas, and I don't mean to brag, but I was the second one to make it. The biggest cowboy back then, or oh, he was a law man. He was called Bass Reeves. Bass Reeves was a real long range. And no one knows 
is no better than a cowboy, Lord. What more is the means to life in this terrain? Although I always knew you planned to send it, I had to say, thank you, Lord, for the rain. Y'all like that? Hey, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Good morning, welcome to The Grove. The Grove Donuts in Delhi is a gourmet donut shop. Caramel macchiato right here. All our gourmet donuts, all made to order. M&M. Here we have so many different flavors. Right here is our Funky Monkey, it's Nutella. Fresh bananas and caramel that it appeals to all ages. It's good. It is so good. Back in 2013, you know, the whole craze with cupcake was going on, so we decided, hey, we can do the same thing with donuts. Top it off with a whole bunch of different flavors. Mint Oreos. We also have our Elvis right here, which has peanut butter, bacon, and banana. The sweetness of the banana to the peanut butter and the saltiness of the bacon, it flows really well. We're known for a lot of our wacky, quirky donuts. Pizza donut, crispy, gooey cheese, and pepperoni. A gourmet donut is different because you're topping it off with a lot of decadent toppings that makes it different than other donuts. Hi, my name is Tam Hong, and I'm the owner of The Grove Donuts in Delhi. My wife was a baker, a home baker. We started a company called I Love Cake Pops back in 2012. I was a full-time hairdresser. Don't have any culinary background, and I kind of know how to cook a little bit, so why not get together and do something that we've never done, and we came up with The Grove Donuts. Strawberry cheesecake is probably one of my favorite desserts. I was like, why not put it on a donut? This right here is our strawberry cheesecake donut, and it has house-made cream cheese, house-made pie crumbs with a strawberry icing, and a fresh strawberry topped on top. And this was the one that put us on the map. Mm, it's actually really good. Everybody fell in love with it. It sold out every single day, sold out every weekend. And from there came, you know, 150 different flavors that we have. Fruit medley donut topped off with chocolate. Inside it's packed with Bavarian cream, fresh strawberries and fresh bananas with some pecan pieces on top. Banana pudding donut, pipe on some house-made banana pudding, fresh banana slices on there, finishing off with some non-dairy whip, house-baked pie crumbs, and vanilla wafer. And that's our banana pudding donut. We have the TNT donut. It's pop rocks on a donut. That is so good. You gotta be kidding me. I felt them popping in my mouth and that glaze they got on top, it complements the pop rocks really well. So my wife is making our creme brulee donut. Basically, it's sugar-coated. Toast it to the sugar caramelized on top, giving it a nice hard texture on the outside. And then she's gonna fill it with some sweet Bavarian cream in the center. Mm -hmm. Very good. The cookie donut, we cut it in half, press it down on the griddle to where it becomes a crispy texture. And then we top it off with whatever flavor you want. We like to play around with the donuts just to see what we can come up with. S'mores right here with chocolate, roasted marshmallows, graham crackers, and chocolate syrup. Whenever we come out with new donuts, we let customer try it for free. Marshmallow fluff, caramel drizzle, and uh, pretzels, okay? We get their feedback. If they like it, we keep it on the menu. If they don't like it, we scrap it. Some of our hits was the maple bacon donut with maple glaze on it and thick cut applewood smoked bacon. It tastes like um, pancakes. It's like pancakes. In our fire in the hole donut, it's one of our more quirky donuts. It starts out with a vanilla cake glazed donut. We're gonna top it off with some fresh jalapeno slices. Roast the jalapeno slices to give it more of a little smoky flavor. Smoked bacon. And a cheddar cheese slice. And we're gonna melt it to perfection. And that's our fire in the hole donut. Wow. Also, we make breakfast sandwiches. Sausage, egg, and cheese, sandwiched between two glazed donuts. It's sweet and like salty. I don't know, it just goes together. Another hit that we also have is our cronuts. It's a croissant donut. If you want to see our cronut dough right here, you can see that it's puffed up in layers. That's what makes it different from other donuts. This is made with croissant dough. Once it's fried, you see how it's nice and crispy texture on the outside. Nice sweet glaze. This is our cinnamon sugar cronut right here. On the inside, real nice and buttery, flaky, a whole bunch of different layers, and then the crunchy texture on the outside. Mm. 
I can probably eat about two. You know, these donuts are actually really big. It's, it's not your normal size donuts. We also do letter donuts. Any customized letters you want. This is our strawberries and cream, fresh strawberry icing, drizzled with vanilla, fresh strawberries. We have about 150 combinations of donuts. So the toppings are endless. It's our Rocky Road donut. It has chocolate, marshmallow, almonds, and caramel sauce. Anything and everything that you can eat with a cupcake, you can probably do on a donut. Flavor-wise, it's endless. Welcome to La Cocina, senores. La Cocina is the name, uh, means the kitchen in Spanish. You want the best chicken enchiladas, I guarantee you, for the best in Fort Payne County. It's simply the kitchen, you know, we love to cook here. The food is absolutely amazing. Great Mexican food with a lot of love, with a lot of passion, that's what we do. Originally, I'm from Nicaragua. And I came here in, in the late 70s. I started working in the restaurant business and I worked for Mama Ninfa for 20 years, given the opportunity to make it in this great country, so here we are, serving great Mexican food to this day. So, you know, I, I love what I do. I'm Andres Novoa and I'm the owner of La Cocina Mexican Restaurant. Right this way, please. When I first came here, we were forced to just do whatever it takes. So my first jobs were in the restaurant industry and that's where I crossed paths with Ninfas. And sure enough, I started working there and, 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 and fell in love with the food, the people, with Mama Ninfa herself, you know? And I said, you know, this is the American dream. Open my, my own business, you know, that was my big goal. This opportunity came along here in this great neighborhood here, Pecan Grove area, and we've been here since 2000, 20 years in this actual location. Well, La Cocina, you know, we're known for cooking great Tex-Mex, and our street tacos, they're world famous, you know, they're very good. To me, this is the best fajitas in town. We also do great fajitas, and we got a dish called La Sirena. So La Sirena comes with some salted mushrooms, you know, with cilantro, butter, wine sauce. It's got a grilled chicken breast. It's got some shrimp in it. Gotta have some Monterey Jack cheese, man. You know, some melted Monterey Jack cheese on top of that. Some ranchero sauce, which is tomato and onion sauce. And then it's like a sandwich, see? And then we melt it. And look how delicioso that is, huh? Delicious. And our fiesta packs, they are unbeatable. That's been one of our biggest staples here. The family style fajita packs. You know, our food is great, fresh from the scratch, but we are a neighborhood restaurant after all, and they love our value. They love the prices, so we are right there for the neighborhood. You just come in here and say fajitas for two, the lunch special, and we're good. It's consistently good all the time, and the wait staff is absolutely amazing. So good, it's my favorite here. I worked for Mama Ninfa for 20 years. She had a lot of passion for food, and not only that, she gave back to the community too. I think I picked up a little bit of that. We do a big Cinco de Mayo celebration here in this location, and it'll benefit Fort Bend Seniors Meals on Wheels program, which we have great passion about it. I think that elderly is very vulnerable in our community. So we said under our watch, we're gonna help this situation. We're promoting volunteerism, and it's amazing. They establish a relationship with them, you know, and, and that's what we're doing out of this little restaurant right here, you know. But we have raised half a million dollars for them already. Last year was 74,000. We have postponed it for September this year, but hopefully it'll be successful. And this is the thing, you're successful, you have to help others. You have to do your part. You have to give back. Well, you know, this pandemic, even though has devastated this industry, you know, we've been very blessed that we have loyal patrons that have supported us. So as you can see, we have to remove tables and chairs here to comply with the social distancing that is required, you know, and so we are operating really at 50%, but uh, we're proud that we haven't let go of any of our employees. And the next step is really go back to normality and to be better and to serve better our community. Welcome to downtown Rosenberg. On 3rd Street in downtown Rosenberg, you're gonna find the coolest stores with the really amazing stories behind the owners. And our first stop 
Southern Sisters. When you come into Southern Sisters, you're going to find big city styles at a very small town prices. The owners here are gonna find you the perfect gift for that special someone that you're looking for. Take a look at all of the refurbished Louis Vuitton keychains, wristlets. They have a huge selection to choose from. And a hop, skip and a jump away, you'll find Hopkins Furniture Company. Beautiful. Perfecting, handcrafted, customized wood pieces that your children's children will call dibs on. There's all kinds of wood in the back that people can come and look at, tell me kind of what they want, and we can find a piece of wood that meets that need. Even through COVID-19, owner William Hawkins says he can't keep up with the demand. People travel as far as Florida to get their hands on these heirloom pieces. It looked like we were gonna catch up for the first time since I've been in business, but we didn't quite catch up. Now, we're heading to Richmond, where you'll find an unsuspecting shop that's a true treasure to the local community. Welcome to Vintage Shop! <laughs> Vintage Hope is just a special place where you don't realize you're coming into a store, you're coming to see friends. Owners and besties, Katie and Elisa, were just two women on a budget and about three years ago decided to open this women's boutique in Richmond, Texas. We also try hard to build capsule wardrobes so that when you buy one piece with us and then you buy your second piece, you're gonna be able to build and wear it multiple right. different ways. And our last stop, meet Rusty. This is so cool. We are now at Treasure Hunters right here on the Main Street in Richmond, Texas. What once used to be a lobby for a hotel back in the 1800s has now been restored, offering hidden treasures, super cute clothing, accessories, and home decor that will catch an eye of everyone in your family. I could easily spend three to four hours in here and get lost. So this bus behind me is a 1957 Ford, which is pretty cool, right? But what's even cooler is the way a Richmond man is using this bus to empower others and break through stereotypes. You can sit there and dwell on your disability, or you can say, hey, I'm not gonna let this hold me back, and find a way to, to make it work. When I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with uh, spinal muscular atrophy type 3. It's a progressive disease. I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to walk until about my second year in college. But I kind of told myself I'm never going to let this disease stop me from doing what I want to do. So I've done adaptive water skiing, adaptive snow skiing, hunting, fishing. I'm an avid scuba diver. I've got over 150 dives logged. I've always loved cars. I love new cars, old cars. So behind us is a 1957 Ford B500 short bus. We've been working on it for about two and a half years. This thing is on full air ride. It's got 24 inch dually wheels, fully handicap accessible. It's got a ramp in the back to get in, and then it's got a ramp that goes down to the front. So in 2017, I, I started the nonprofit Beyond the Bus and I wanna make it into kind of a movement. And it really is about looking past the bus. The bus will draw you in, but really what it is, it's really about getting people with disabilities out doing activities they didn't think they could do. What we really wanted to do was be able to take this to mainstream shows. There's a lot of people that have disabilities and they give up and they focus more on the disability than the fact that of what they can do. Like scuba diving, hunting, fishing, snow skiing, water skiing. All these different activities are available for people with disabilities. We're almost a marketing tool for these nonprofits. You can just see it lifts their spirits and they become, hey, I can do this. But really what it's gonna do is it's gonna change people's lives. I guarantee you, we've seen it already. Such an awesome story. And another really cool thing to come from this is the fact that this bus won fan favorite at the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. That means it's in the running to become an actual Hot Wheels. And if you want to see more with Chris or you want to see more from our ABC 13 Plus series in Richmond and Rosenberg, you can go to abc13.com slash plus. In Rosenberg, I'm Chaz Miller, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. You'd never guess it by seeing him now, but five years ago, Efren de Los Santos weighed over 400 pounds. Late nights and bad eating had him toppling the scale. But some close friends invited him to work yeah. out in a garage gym, which later became Bunker Fitness in Richmond. I didn't care about my body, I guess, and eventually I just, one next day I just woke up, I was like, you know what, change, let's just get it. And next thing you know, he was a big boy, but he started to move. And what he has that people, I think a lot of people out there have his heart. 
and all you have to do is have that heart, show up, we'll take care of the rest. He has dedicated his life to recreating his body and his lifestyle, and he's actually now a coach at Bunker. Nice form, nice form. I was intimidated. I would go to the morning classes because it was smaller, and then the evenings were a lot bigger. And uh, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to the evening class one day and just try it out. And man, I just, the support cast was awesome, man. I just fell in love with it. Hey, come back. I was like, all right, I guess I am, you know, part of them. I am one of them. And the Richmond area fitness community has been there for him, and he's been there for them. We're, we're a community, we're a lifestyle, we're a refugee. That's fitness for us. Maybe work is just pushing them, and they're like, this is their way away from work. You know what I mean? So it's just their little, their second home. David Nuno, ABC 13, Eyewitness Sports. It's the kind of neighborhood you might see in a movie. You know, where everybody knows not just you, but your parents and your grandparents. Well, I know everybody here. They know me. This side of Rosenberg had always been considered north side of Rosenberg. And uh, uh, it's it, it, earlier, it used to be called the poor side of town. Unfortunately, poverty rates here are higher than anywhere else in Fort Bend County. A big old galoot like me, to see that, you know, it, it just hurts. Before COVID-19, volunteers at Our Lady of Guadalupe Catholic Church were providing food to 400 to 600 people every week. Over the past month, that number has gone up to 900. What I see is a, a family that has never asked for anything. And here they come because they have no job. They have no hopes of a job and uh, they just need the help. At the same time, the resale store here is closed to customers and donations are down. But volunteers keep showing up to help. This is their neighborhood too. And this is their calling, whether they planned on it or not. <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, you want to tell me this 15 years ago, I would run away. <laughs> oh, no, I never knew this. It's just, it's just, uh, uh. Once I started to meet the people, it, it really changed my heart, I, the community, and, and to see them coming in because I grew up with them. Life has been moving pretty slowly lately here in Rosenberg. We can all relate. I miss my friends and my teachers the most out of anything. Marlene missed the end of her fifth grade year, but she and about 75 others have been taking online classes through Fort Bend Hope. The nonprofit was founded four years ago to make sure both kids and adults had access to computers, Wi-Fi, and other educational resources. We believe education is the key to breaking the cycle of generational poverty because education is not just about facts, figures, or things like that. Education is about hope. Education is about options. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken away options, and school closures have been tough especially for families struggling financially. Those here are working out plans now to partially reopen in the fall. It's hard to learn a new language. It's hard to get citizenship uh, going through school. That's hard. So we, we want to be a place that people want to be. And how do you do that? You make a community. It's gratifying to see how far they've come and um, and just how they help each other. You know, just that community that we've built. It's really special. It helps to be happier because if you're more of like a grumpy person, then you just like don't want to do absolutely nothing. And with happiness comes something else. If the wind in my sail on the sea stays behind me. Confidence. Just one more benefit of education. If I go, there's just no telling how far I'll go. On this rainy day, months into the COVID-19 pandemic, sculptor Richard Jarvis creates. I can think about things. And uh, uh, when I was sculpting this last Saturday, I had a friend that was just uh, informed that his wife was diagnosed with cancer. So, you know, when you're sculpting, you can give a lot of in-depth thought and prayer. If you're interested in unique art, the Fort Bend Art Center is the place to be. But for now, you'll have to go online for your art fix. The center has been closed to visitors since mid-March, and plans to open on July 3rd are looking less and less possible now. This place is kind of a oh, an expensive storage unit <laughs> without traffic coming in. 
-hmm. And um, it's, it's, I'm glad when it's over. We have a, uh, an older population. We are 100% run by volunteers. So we've taken a lot of precautions. The Art League of Fort Bend has been around for 63 years. So even with the center closed, something is always going on with the nonprofit's 150 members. Take a look at what they've created over the past few months. Some artists have even been teaching virtual classes. It has been amazing to see the strength in this group of ladies of our board and being able to make the, the best decisions for all of our members at the right time. We all learn from each other and uh, so hopefully I'll have something to do when I finally decide to retire in another five or ten years. So I'll hopefully get good enough to make a living doing some art. They do. Find you. Okay. All right. The Rosenberg you see today was built for one reason. If you listen closely, you might even hear it. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the railroads. <laughs> the Rosenberg Railroad Museum takes visitors back to the 1880s, when the Gulf, Colorado and Southern Pacific Railroads were the center of the city. After a two month closure, the museum recently reopened to small groups like this Boy Scout troop. I like how they look, how they sound. I, even the big trains, I, I just really love them. When I have at home, I have like modeled trains kind of like we use today. So you talk about sort of the history of, of our country, um, systems and operations that have become important to us over time. Um, a lot of the core values of Scouts have to do with cultivating just good people um, that have some sense of life skills. And this lesson in history, just like all others, is also about the present and future. Which path will Rosenberg take next? We have a lot of um, hands-on things and, and we're sitting right next to active rail lines. And so we talk about the history of railroading, but any moment a real train can come by. Richmond and Rosenberg have always been called the Twin Cities, even though Richmond has its pride and Rosenberg had its pride. It was like one big city. This is the, the thing about Texas is barbecue, you know? Really nice and juicy, tender. The smoke, the spices, it just tickles the senses. Okay, can I help you? We're inside of Schultz's Barbecue in Rosenberg. We're sitting in a wonderful swinging door barbecue in Richmond, Texas. They were going to build a large subdivision across the street. Parents owned the property, said let's build a little building, make a cafe, beer joint, store, something. And you can run it and learn the business world. And right after we built the building, they pulled out of the subdivision. For a year, I sat here going, what the heck? And a guy came in and said, hey, fix me a sandwich. I said, well, I don't have any. He said, well, barbecue would be good. So I went and had a pit built and started learning to cook barbecue. So we've been in the restaurant business 54 years. We started the barbecue up 30 years ago. Experience, experience, experience. It wouldn't be Texas without a good barbecue. We have customers that have been coming for 30 years. The same quality food all the time makes you want to come back. We make sure we use a top grade brisket. To me, um, it's, it's the rub. Uh, it definitely is comfort food, and that's why I'm back. I would have never thought to build it this big, number one. Uh, or dream that I could support a, a unit the size that we are. With the help of my dad, we built, physically built this whole place. Best barbecue I've ever had. It's the best barbecue in the world. There's several good barbecue places, you know, from here, all, 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 all this area. The people are friendly. A great area to grow up and do business in. I'm in a business where people thank me for letting them spend money. And if they feel good when they leave here, like I said, and thank me for making their day enjoyable or their evening enjoyable, I've accomplished my mission.